My name is Chris Wilkes, and I'm the president of EngineSoft USA. EngineSoft has been working with Meritor in the USA for about a year and a half now, and in Europe for several years beyond that. We have worked with them on the particle method and introduced that concept to them about a year and a half ago. The gentlemen from Meritor, uh, Brian and Ragnar, are going to talk about how they've used the software, what their challenges were, and how this software has helped address some of those challenges. At the end of their presentation, we're going to have a demonstration of one particular particle-based uh, software, which is Particle Works. You've been watching a movie playing in the background as you were on hold, and it's about that particular piece of software. So the agenda, then we'll talk a little bit about the CFD and uh, uh, application of the particle method. Ragnar is going to talk with us about Meritor and their use of the software. James will actually talk about some additional applications for uh, the particle method, such as dishwashers and other applications, and then the demonstration. We'll have time for questions and answers. During the course of this discussion, feel free to go to the chat session, send a message to the administrator, and we will ask questions uh, during the process as well. So if you have some particular questions that are topical, we'll try to get those inserted during a particular segment. Otherwise, we'll answer most of the questions at the end. Okay. With that, why don't I turn it over? James, you're going to talk about particle method CFD? Yes, I am, Chris. Thank you. So I'm going to start off talking a little bit about particle works, which is a, a specific uh, particle-based method. Um, or uses a particular particle-based method, and then I'll go through some more theory on different application or different types of particle-based methods. So particle works in particular, uh, and this is generally applicable to particle methods. They're mesh-free methods, so there's a lot less pre-processing work required. Particle works in particular is good for free surface flows, and most particle methods are good for moving boundaries. They also typically are highly parallelizable and usually are able to run on GPUs. And with the uh, increase in GPU co compute capacity in the past five or so years, this becomes extremely uh, advantageous. So again, I'll, I'll discuss in particular MPS here, but the exact same discretization method applies to SPH. And I'll discuss the differences a little bit on the next slide. So. Conventional methods, as you can see on the left, have really a fixed grid, they're an Eulerian approach, and you have fixed nodes with fixed connections between those nodes. Those connections can change when you do an adaptive remeshing process, but this is pretty time intensive and can drastically increase your compute workload. MPS and particle methods in general take a different approach. So they use a Lagrangian approach to directly discretize the fluid, and then carry that discretization throughout the domain. And then connections between nodes are drawn dynamically at each time step. So you can have a varying number of connections between nodes at each time step versus a conventional method where you'll have a set number of connections uh, from one node to a set number of other nodes. And we'll see later on how this changes the pre-processing workflow that you have and, and drastically shortens it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So this is typically where people ask me how this difference differs from SPH or why it is different than SPH. And to answer that question, I like to give a little bit of the history. So SPH or smooth, par smooth particle hydrodynamics, it's a mouthful. Uh, it was originally developed in the 70s for astrophysics. So the problems that they were trying to look at were like star formation. So you have clouds of dust that are coalescing into a very high density region of space, and then you know, they start fusion. So you have what can be modeled as a highly compressible fluid. And to discretize that with a mesh can be kind of tricky, right? So they took a completely different approach, and they use particles that are, think of them as free floating in space, and each particle represents a distribution of mass and volume. And then, uh, this distribution here represents how strongly those nodes interact with each other, but you'll have a, a similar distribution for how that mass is oriented uh, around that center point of the node. Then you can 
track those nodes through space and take the superposition of all of the nodes distributions to get your overall mass and volume and then des density distribution. So this is really good for highly compressible fluids. It's been adapted somewhat for weakly compressible fluids, uh, although there, there are stability issues when you do that. To address this, MPS was developed in the 90s uh, out of the University of Tokyo. And it was taking a similar approach, but different enough that it could more readily handle free surface flows. So you have, instead of a distribution uh, at the node, you have a fixed, uh, a volume of fixed density. And then you have a different, these are, are kernel functions. So these define how the two particles interact with each other based on distance. So you have an asymptotic function instead of this uh, smooth uh, in differentiable function. So this, is, this can be much more readily thought of as a marble rather than almost a cloud of dust in the case of, of SPH. So this lends itself very well to free surface flows. You're able to directly resolve free surfaces because you can just look for particles that don't have neighbors in one direction. Whereas with SPH, you'll, you'll have to take an approach where you're uh, essentially clipping in space uh, at a certain uh, density of distribution. So that kind of goes through some of the theory and I, I like to walk through a 2D example that gives you more of an intuitive sense of, of why these have an advantage. So on the left, we have the conventional method. It's been discretized and you have to discretize the entire domain that you want to look at. Even these, uh, these like null nodes or nodes with a, a zero volume fraction. And then you define where your volume fraction is. And through time, you'll solve the volume fraction and a lot of other parameters at each time step and track those through time. With MPS or with SPH, um, really all the, the particle type methods, you'll directly discretize this fluid. So you end up with fewer nodes to capture the same amount of resolution. And then we'll track these through space and time. So if we get to the end of the simulation, this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, the advantage really becomes huge is you don't need to know ahead of time where fluid is going to be and where you need resolution. So you can use expensive adaptive remeshing techniques on the left here, or you can just use an MPS method or a particle method where you've set a sufficiently large domain and then you, you get the resolution that you've specified at the beginning everywhere in the domain. And you're not paying for compute cycles to calculate a, uh, a zero volume fraction like you would be in this region here. You're going to get a zero at every time step, right? So here we're not solving over here at all. And when you kind of put all of these ideas together, you can get very complex simulations that are relatively easy to set up and relatively easy for a computer to simulate. So let me show this video. So because we don't have to do any adaptive remeshing, dealing with moving boundaries is very simple. I'm not gonna get into to the exact definition of walls and SPH and MPS, they differ a bit. Um, but we can just prescribe motion and not really pay a computational penalty to do so. So that was the, uh, the background theory. And now I'll hand over to Ragnar. Let me switch slide decks. And he can talk about uh, their, their actual use case. Hello everyone, my name is Ragnar Desna. I'm principal engineer for Meritor. And uh, Meritor is a leading global supplier for drivetrain, mobility, braking, and aftermarket solutions for the commercial vehicle industry and industrial markets. Um, we have a, we're a $4.4 billion company in terms of revenues. We have 9, 000, over 9,000 employees spread over 19 countries. And we are headquarters. We are headquartered at, at in Troy, Michigan. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Um, we serve diverse end markets, and uh, some of which uh, include line haul, off highway, specialty, defense uh, trailers, as well as uh, components for for uh, these uh, these markets. 
Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, so here's uh, some of our uh, products that we offer uh, for truck. We we offer axles, drive lines, brakes. Uh, for trailers, we offer axles and trailer suspensions as well as trailer brakes. And for defense, um, we offer suspensions and uh, transfer cases. And uh, for the off-highway, we offer heavy-duty front, front and rear drive axles, transfer cases, and all-wheel drive systems. Um, for specialty, we offer front and rear axles, all-wheel drive systems, gearboxes, uh, power takeoff units, and uh, for the aftermarket, uh, we, we offer original equipment, service parts, and remanufactured parts. Next slide, please. Um, Meritor is um, also participating in the electrification of the truck industry. So <clears throat> for this uh, effort, we, we have the Blue Horizon brand for Meritor. Um, we were focused on uh, advanced uh, technologies uh, for the electrification of, of our drivetrains. And um, it's uh, for these new products that we use uh, particle works uh, quite extensively. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so here's a here's an example of uh, how we use particle works for our drive axles. So um, in this case, we want to look at the the lubrication of our uh, axle uh, axle housings and carriers. So we included in the model are the are the gears and uh, and bearings that are part of our drivetrain, and we want to look at the how how the how the loop paths are functioning because we want to make sure that uh, the the bearings are properly lubricated. So to to accurately predict the lubrication of the bearing, uh, we have to we have to adjust some parameters that uh, Particle Works offers, and some of these parameters include the 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 oil uh, the oil properties like the density and viscosity and the uh, surface tension. We also have to adjust pra uh, parameters like slip coefficient, contact angle and uh, particle size. So particle size is very important when we want to predict uh, whether the, the small uh, gaps in the bearings are lubricated. So we have to have uh, a particle size that is small enough to, to go through those uh, small gaps in the, in the bearing. So normally we would run this uh, partic uh, particle work software using a GPU. Um, because that, that will uh, that will uh, that will help us reduce the runtime, uh, since uh, the particle work software was specifically designed to use with the with the GPU. So before we before we use particle works, we were using a conventional uh, CFD code that uses uh, finite volume, and um, and with that uh, finite volume approach. We had a difficult time creating the mesh and defining the boundary, con the moving boundary conditions, and uh, de defining defining the boundary layers. And uh, with with particle works, we were able to increase our productivity um, by ten times or, or more, just from. Uh, uh, from, from for two reasons mainly one is we reduced our pre-processing time quite a bit because uh, particle works is a meshless approach so we, we reduced we reduced our pre-processing time um, from from three days to, to half a day so that, that's that's typical and in the run times we reduced our run times by as much as ten times 
by using this uh, GPU uh, approach. So, so with these particle works, we can look at uh, the lubrication uh, performance. We can look at the uh, flow rates. We could look at the uh, churning losses. Um, so these are the, the typical typical uses that uh, um, we we, uh, we use particle works uh, currently. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, uh, in addition to looking at the uh, fluid density or distribution of fluid, we can also look at the velocities. So this is the same animation, but instead of plotting densities, we're now looking at uh, fluid velocity. <clears throat> so um, in the future, we will uh, be using uh, particle works to predict uh, to predict uh, cooling effects. Um, and uh, our, our strategy is to use particle works to, to predict a heat transfer coefficient and then use, uh, use the heat transfer coefficient data from particle works into a finite element code where we can do the transient uh, thermal, thermal dynamics. Um, so um, I think uh, I'm going to give back the control to, to James. Thank you, Ragnar. Um, I think we can pause now for questions if any have come in. Uh, Chris, I, are you looking at the questions right now? I am, thanks. So one of the questions was on a complex model, how long does it generally take to run the simulation? And Ragnar, you were talking about for those particular models that you showed there. Um, do you have some sense for how many particles uh, you you used in, in some of those simulations? Yes, yes. For um, what we're showing right now is a fairly simple model, and that's probably, I would say, depending on particle size, this model can have uh, anywhere from four to five million particles for this simple model. But uh, typically, the models we're working with are, are larger models than this, and uh, typically we would work with a, a model with 12 million particles. And for a model with 12 million particles, we can simulate one second per day on our GPU. We, we use a single GPU. Okay, great. And another question has come in. Uh, regarding validation. So uh, Adam was asking, have you validated the simulation against previous method, classical CFD or physical uh, testing? And, and of course, for you in the US, you may have some answers to that, but, but I know you also use some of the results from your European uh, counterparts. So uh, can you speak to that one? Uh, yes, um, we can compare the results from of particle work from our conventional uh, CFD and uh, qualitatively, uh, the the uh, the fluid flow looks the same, and uh, also we can quantify the flow rate at some cross sections, and they're also in, this, in the same ballpark. And in addition, uh, from our European um, colleagues, they have done a test correlation with particle works by by measuring flow rates, and also they. They were in the in the in the same ballpark with with the uh, with the test. Okay, great. And on that same question for validation of results, there are case studies on the EngineSoft websites that uh, do have validation results that that have been done at other companies as well. Uh, and Anthony Coffey, uh, does the code predict temperature increase due to gear friction? James, do you want to take that one? So there is a shear heating model uh, that is supported. We either just went mute or he answered in a very short answer. James, you still with us? Uh, yep, I'm still here. Uh, so we Would do you? support shear heating. Um, so you, you could get temperature predictions from gear friction. OK, thanks. <laughs> And then also uh, one more question, uh, John's asking, where do you get values for surface tension coefficient uh, 
contact angles, slip conditions, etc. cetera. Um, and, and I know there's options inside the software for that. Ragnar, do you want to answer that? Um, so uh, at the start, uh, uh, the particle works, uh, uh, particle works of vendor James uh, gave us a guideline of uh, some starting values for those parameters, and then uh, we we perform some design of experiments to see uh, which values are, are are the most sensitive. So, and um, our finding is that for for different cases, you 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 will you will need to use different values for these parameters to to get a good correlation. Right. So that's uh, so, John. That's a part of the initial training uh, in Meritor's case. Uh, one of our engineers, James, came on site, spent a day and a half with them, James, just kind of going over uh, some training on the software, but mostly best practices with use of the software. Okay. So with that, why don't we continue on? And James, if you will hit the next section, uh, we will also have uh, Brian and Ragnar uh, may have they may be able to answer some additional questions feel free to uh, for those of you that are attending this ask the questions as you think of them in the webinar chat and we'll make sure to insert them in the middle or add them at the end james thanks chris uh, so i believe you were going to cover the next couple of slides and then i'll jump into more of a few applications outside of gearbox that particle works is good for and Oh yeah, that was me next. All right, <laughs> next slide. So I believe everybody here on the call was invited by EngineSoft to the call. So you probably know us fairly well, but we are several hundred engineers throughout the world, uh, mostly in Europe and also a strong presence in the United States. We've been in business for over 30 years. Um, doing CAE, both CFD, FEA, uh, multi-body dynamics, and of course, extensive particle method fluid flow. Several of the experts from EngineSoft Engineering are on this call. Next slide. The different areas that we focus, we do a lot of consulting projects. Customers use us to uh, perform the actual work using the software tools. We provide software solutions, training, and we have a lot of uh, joint ventures with research agencies, uh, some in the US, uh, most of those are in Europe, uh, organizations like the European Space Agency, that type. So um, we do extensive services in addition to the software sales. Next slide. And then we do it with a lot of people. So many of you will recognize your own logos on this slide. Um, let's see who's on the call. Uh, yeah, several of the ones that I'm recognizing here from Italy are also showing up uh, on this call themselves. We cross multiple industries uh, and obviously as a CAE company, we're focused very heavily in uh, the heavy industry, automotive industry, uh, and then that carries over into uh, the appliances, retail and consumer as well. Next slide, James. Yeah, all right, that was it for me. Yeah, so now James can talk about what you wanted to hear, which is the, he'll go into a demonstration of the software uh, and then cover briefly what some of the other applications are. The point in the app additional applications is there are certain, um, there are certain problems that you need visibility into that traditional meshing methods cannot provide an adequate level of visibility into that particular problem. And the particle method does a better job of giving you the answer. So outside of just a gearbox, which is what Meritor was using it for very well, there's some additional applications. James? Yeah, that's, that's exactly correct. So um, gearbox is probably the, the most commonly used application for particle methods in general, particle works in particular. Uh, but we, we talk to customers all the time that have kind of novel approaches uh, to other problems. Uh, sometimes they're problems that we've never heard of, and those are always the most exciting. Um, but I'll, I'll cover some of the, the features and, and applications. So one that is important for a, a certain class of problems is when prescribed motion isn't enough to sufficiently define the motion in your, in your problem, or when you have a coupling 
between uh, the fluid and the, the moving boundary object. So we have a coupling with Recordine, which is a multi-body dynamics tool. This works for both solid rigid bodies and, uh, and flexible bodies, so kind of an FEA approach on the Recordine side. But this is really good for cases like this where you have a chain, prescribing the motion to begin with would be difficult. Um, and then it's light enough that the, the fluid forces on the chain are going to change the behavior of the chain, which then changes the behavior of the fluid. So it's an inherently coupled problem. And when we run into those, the, the typical approach is to couple with Recordine. So another application is when you have a, an airflow field. So I don't know how well this is gonna show up on WebEx, but uh, we can import flow fields. So we don't support compressible fluids, which air is uh, using the MPS method, but we can impart momentum onto MPS particles to uh, kind of take place of the air. So that's the, the one-way coupling approach. In this case, the airflow field was imported from OpenFoam. We can bring in airflow fields from anyone, and we have a, a specific uh, plugin for Workbench with Fluent uh, that I'll talk about at the end. So just a, another application, I believe. So aquaplaning, and these are just to kind of give you some idea of non-gearbox applications that part of works and particle methods are good at. So really anywhere that you have splashing is a good choice for particle methods because you need a, a very fine resolution in a very small area of space. And you generally have a very large domain. So dealing with a mesh and adaptive remeshing is going to be a challenge and time consuming. By just discretizing the fluid, you save a lot of compute cycles. Now we'd like to mention that we support non-Newtonian fluids. So if you're doing splashing of water, that's gonna be a standard Newtonian fluid model for mud, for example. Um, that is generally gonna be modeled as a non-Newtonian fluid. And that's something we support. The same uh, general approach can be used when you have uh, fluid properties changing with temperature um, as well as, as the, the shear velocity. So you can like import a, a table of fluid properties with respect to temperature and use those. And on the topic of temperature, uh, we mentioned this briefly. So there, there is a temperature solver um, and there's also an HTC solver. So for a lot of problems, the, the thermal problem exists on a longer time scale than the fluid problem. So a general approach that's used, and Ragnar mentioned this, is taking HTC coefficients, mapping those onto a wall of interest, in this case, the inside of the piston gallery, and then bringing those into a tool like ANSYS or any FEA tool for your uh, longer scale thermal analysis. And on the topic of ANSYS, there is a Workbench plugin. This is relatively new, so if you've previously looked at ParticleWorks, uh, you, you may not be familiar with this, this plugin. Um, and it can do a couple of different things, bringing the HTC and pressure values from ParticleWorks into ANSYS Mechanical. And we can also take uh, an airflow field from Fluent and bring that into ParticleWorks. Uh, to do that one-way coupling that I was talking about earlier. So those are kind of broad strokes what I wanted to cover as far as other applications go. Um, this could be a, a much longer presentation, but uh, I'll jump right into the live demo at this point. So let me switch particle works onto this screen. Okay. So I have this scene already set up. This is what I'm going to walk through. Um, set this up yesterday and then ran, uh, this took about 10 minutes to, to actually solve. So we're gonna run through this. So I'm gonna start up with a new scene. Let me switch, yep. give me one second. Uh, while I get resituated, Chris, do we have any other questions that have come in so far? 
Yeah, okay. Chris had yeah. a. Uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me? We can, yes. Okay, sorry, couldn't hear a word you were saying. So there is another question from uh, Jonathan, a user, and uh, by the way, hi, John. I'm also curious about how to calculate power loss in tapered roller bearings. This would appear to be a pretty complex post-processing feat with uh, difficult output, different outputs, for each solid, does particle worker and yourself have a script to assist? Um, James, you want to do that one now, or you want to come back to that one at the end? Um, so it, I'm not 100% sure how Ragnar is doing this, so I'm not sure if, if he wants to take it. Um, OK. So if I want to look at the power loss of the bearing by itself, then I would import the bearing as one STL file. So it'll be one object in the in the model. And then uh, particle works can predict what is the churning loss just for that uh, particular element in the in the model. So but I guess that that's how I would do it. Thanks, right now. Okay, and uh, I think people can watch me do this setup. Um, I don't need to narrate everything. So if we have other questions that are coming in, um, we can kind of do those and I can do this a little bit in the background. So I'm just defining my uh, fluid properties here and I have little cheat sheet on the other screen. So Marilu from uh, GM was asking a question via email, so I'll answer that one. Oop, as another one just came in. Um, but anyway, was asking about uh, calculating drag forces on uh, gears in the particle works version in production now my engineer tells me the answer will be able to uh, address that uh, and that's coming out in the next few months and then can it give uh, no i'm sorry that was uh, can it give windage on and churning loss predictions and windage was in the upcoming version and churning loss predictions is something that particle works is used to help with now james you want to verify my accuracy of that one uh sure so i think we can do the windage losses that you're talking about um today if if you're just talking about um the, the same kind of thing as a, a churning loss. If you're actually talking about the the losses from the air, um, like air friction essentially, then that is something that you would wait until the next release for. Okay. James, do you want more questions or are you ready to go with that? Uh, so yeah, let me uh, do the pre-processing. I have a few other things to set in here, but I can do the pre-processing now um, and show you what that looks like. So, uh, and, and let me let me throw in one question for Ragnar. We're looking at that. Uh, another question from uh, Marilu: uh, Have you used it to look at uh, bearings in terms of lube distribution? So, so if. Uh, we have particles that are small enough, and we can look at uh, how the how the bearing is lubricated. So there's a trade-off there because uh, you know um, the I think the the runtime is a cubic function of the of the reciprocal of the bear of the particle diameter. So. So you you need a really small particle to to allow to allow particle works to predict the the flow within within the small spaces in the bearing. 
Got it. Massimo, I have just added you as the ability to talk. Can you speak to that? James, he's muted. So uh, we do have some case studies that are that do show uh, bearings, and we can follow up uh, with you, Marilu, on that. But but I know we have a couple that are are showing bearing uh, and lubrication. That's correct. Massimo, you're live. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, yes, we have some cases uh, about bearings lubrication, both with the oil and the, and the grease. Uh, these are actually uh, confidential, so we can say much at the moment. Thanks, Massimo. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I can jump back over to the <clears throat> to the demo model. Um, at this point, I've set all my material properties. I've prescribed all the motion on all of these gears. Um, you probably saw them kind of jumping around. Uh, I had to set the, the center of rotation for all of them, and we have a, a button to do that. Uh, so now I can preview all of my motion here, and that looks OK. Uh, I did the pre-processing step. So it took the, the fill object, which is just a plane uh, along with a direction. So I put that into the housing, tell it what level of oil I want to start with, and then it fills the uh, the volume automatically. There's also standard inflows and outflows, things like that. Um, so that's been done, and let me give a once over on the uh, the simulation settings. So I think this is all okay, and let me change one thing for stability. And assuming I didn't forget anything, uh, this sh should be okay. So, go. Yeah. It's always a toss up during a live demo if you forget uh, to fill in one field. So, looks like we're okay though. And this simulation will take about 10 minutes. Um, it's obviously a very coarse uh, particle size, but uh, for demo purposes, I think it, it works okay. And this is just running on my laptop, which is a pretty standard engineering laptop. Um, so not a not a particularly high end GPU, but uh, but the GPU is definitely capable of being used and uh, and speeds up the simulation. So are there any questions uh, at this point about either the, the theory or the model setup, or we could go back to any questions from Meritor? Right, so one of the questions, and I'll address this to uh, uh, Ragnar and, and Brian, uh, how long did it take for you to be com comfortable with the software? Oh, um, we had a one day training and uh, that was uh, good enough to get started. Um, but in addition, um, most of the work, when, when we deal with particle works project, most of the work is done by the CAD designer. We have to tell the CAD designer, you know, how to prepare the, we, we work with Creo, so we, we, we tell the CAD designer how to prepare the Creo assembly for, for particle works. So it's a, it's a collaboration between the, the CFD analyst and the CAD designer. Okay. Another question that has come in, what are the output slash post-processing tools you use most often? Um, so we, we use uh, the flow rates through a specified cross-section. We use that a lot. We also use the churning loss for a specific part. So, so one specific part can be one STL file, and particle works can predict the churning loss for that uh, one specific part. And then 
we look at the visualization to see if the if the loop paths that we designed are are working as uh, as uh, we we want it to work. So so we use the visualization a lot, and uh, it's very easy to to look at cross sections of the flow, any any cross section. But, um, so those are the those are the three tools that we use a lot. Thank you. And another question from Anthony. How does it handle the gear geometry clearance? Do the gears need to be offset for a specific clearance, or is it based on particle size? Um, we don't need to offset the gears. So unlike a conventional CFD tool, uh, when we use the when we use the finite volume approach. We had to reduce we had to reduce the gear size so that we don't squeeze a a volume of fluid. But uh, with particle works, we don't have to do any of that. So so um, we, you can have zero clearance, and as particle works, will will still work. I can elaborate a little bit on that from what's going on under the hood. So during that pre-processing step, the geometry is discretized in its own way. So just like I showed that kernel function that described the strength of interaction between two particles, a similar function is drawn offset from the wall. So I can preview this on, uh, on here. So this is a, a cut plane of that distance function is what we call it, uh, extending away from this, this shaft here. And the, the color represents how strongly the wall is going to interact with a particle. But wall distance functions, so there will be uh, another one here. And uh, let's see which one. So these two distance functions are not going to actually interact with each other. And they can overlap, and there's no issue with that um, because there's no repulsive force generated between two distance functions, only between a distance function and a, a particle. So I, I hope that helped. Okay, another person has asked for the Particle Works release schedule, James. Typical release schedule. So the our next release is expected out sometime uh, June or July, and that's probably pretty uh, pretty typical that we have uh, one major release a year. I'm trying to think in my head when the the last major major release was. Um, and if Massimo is still unmuted, he might be able to give a better answer than I can. Yes, version seven will be released at the beginning of, uh, of June um, and will be a major release. And the previous one was uh, uh, February 2019. So we have basically one release per year. Thank you, Massimo. Another question has come in on the use of uh, particle works in the EV market, so the electric vehicle and the E-drive. So given the relationship between the axle housing and the E-drives, uh, are you taking the results from particle works to perform thermal analysis on E-drive? And so I'm going to broaden that a little bit. We were speaking before the call got started, and Ragnar, uh, can you speak to uh, any use of uh, particle works on the particle method in the e-drive space. Um, here at uh, Meritor, uh, uh, we're not using particle works to predict the the thermal effect yet, but that that will be our next step. So our our plan is to use particle work uh, 
to predict the heat transfer coefficient on the different surfaces and then use use the heat transfer data in a finite element code to do our uh, thermal analysis. Um, the reason we need to do this is because the the fluid flow uh, occurs in a in one uh, time scale, but the thermal effects occurs in a much larger time scale. So we cannot do both flow and uh, thermal effects on, on the same simulation. Thank you, Ragnar. Uh, and for the, I didn't look back to see who had asked that question, uh, but there is a paper on thermal optimization of E-drives using the uh, MPS method or the uh, method that ParticleWorks uses on the website. So you're, and it's a fairly detailed paper, uh, probably about seven, eight pages long that does go into uh, how the software is used, including validation. Okay, we have another question that has come in. May have already been answered. We talked earlier about particle size. I think we've answered that question. Uh, another one, uh, can you address the, uh, can you slash do you need to run this on HPC? Uh, Ragnar, I think you've spoken to that because you're doing it on uh, GPU, but can you yeah. speak to uh, HPC? Um, we used, uh, yeah, we tried using a, a particle works on an HPC with eight cores. Um, there's an echo. Um, but uh, but I think particle, the particle works software was designed to run on a GPU. So our experience was the running it on GPU was much much faster than running on an HPC. Okay, great. So there is also a recent presentation that we will show briefly to answer the question about the gear. Yes, Chris, this was so about... I'm uh, how to take a presentation back. Yes, so I, I mentioned before that we, uh, the, what we are doing with uh, some bearings manufacturers is, is confidential. I actually forgot about this paper that was presented last year. Uh, so this is available from our website and uh, right. tells about the lubrication of roller bearings and the pumping effect. So the typical, I, I don't want to go through, but the typical application of particle works for bearings is to calculate the uh, churning losses, power losses, the oil or in some cases, uh, grease distribution. So we can handle uh, highly viscous flows and, and also semi-solid material. And in this case, the aim of the simulation was to simulate the, to predict the pumping effect of the roller, of the, of the bearings. So it's a quite complex geometry and the large bearings for um, an electric generator. And the aim was to understand if the uh, lower row of rollers was able to pump the oil up to the upper part of the, of the, of the system to lubricate yep. the bearings. And so that's the case study I have on screen. This is available on both of the EngineSoft websites. Okay. James, are you finished showing the results? Uh, I can jump back over and show a few of the post-processing things that we can do. Um, I'm not sure if I see any other questions in right now. Um, uh, so Pascal has asked uh, to Meritor, do you keep running physical tests or do you only validate you 
uh, I think he means your, or do you only va validate your axle lubrication systems with particle work? So, um, and I'll rephrase slightly. So, so now that you've had the software for a year and you've gone through some of the amount of validation on the early steps, are you replacing physical test or reducing physical tests through the use of the software? Uh, we are definitely reducing the physical test. We still do physical test. Um, we have a, we have a, a axle housings that are made of a transparent plastic, so we can see the flow. So, so we we are still doing those, but uh, we are we have reduced the number of physical tests uh, quite a bit using the particle work software. And and so in terms of your development cycle, has that meant that you are doing more simulation of different types of solutions? Um, is it reducing your total time that you have in the in the product development cycle, or is it just making it so that you can do more simulation? So it's sort of a trade-off, right? Are you doing more, or are you reducing to total time? Oh, we are. We are. Uh... We reduce the total uh, cycle development time, plus we are investigating more design alternatives. So, so we, we can run a, a lot of uh, different what-if analysis with particle works. And we were not able to do this before with, uh, with conventional CFD. All right, James, you want to show? Sure. So you can see this uh, this simulation finished. The last time I ran it, it was about 10 minutes. Uh, so I think that's what it was again this time. And right off the bat, we do all the post-processing directly in the software. So there's, there isn't like a second package that we have to export to. Um, and the typical workflow, at least in my experience, is that you'll start off kind of visually interrogating the results. And the best way that we like to do that is using the color map. So we can map any parameter or uh, any output onto the particles and see that result uh, basically in real time. So right now I have velocity mapped onto these particles. I can change the, uh, the min and max to adjust my color values. I'll leave this on auto right now. Um, so we can see where, um, where we have higher speeds, where we have lower speeds, things like that. And one thing that I like to do, especially when I'm really trying to dig into a model, is I can turn that off and I can use clipping. So if I don't care about um, very slow particles, for example, I can clip that to one and then only be looking at, uh, at the faster moving particles. So and I can play this back and then see you know, more clearly what's happening in a, in a specific region. And I could do the same thing with uh, pressure, for example. So I can see we have uh, you know pressure fluctuations down here, and I can do the same thing. I can clip uh, to a certain value. And one other thing that I'd like to mention um, with uh, with vector values, we can choose which component. By default, it's always normal, but if I only care about the uh, the y or the x or something, I can do that. Um, and sometimes that's helpful when you're trying to to narrow in on a sp specific question. I think that's that's the main thing that I wanted to show. Um, we can do kind of all the the normal stuff. So taking uh, a cut plane or a cut section and then mapping uh, specific values onto that that plane. We can export videos, things like that, um, measuring flow rates. Um, I can measure volumes in a particular area, for example. So all of this, you know, take a minute to run and we're running up on time. So I wanted to see if there were any more questions. <laughs> 
Chris, do we have any other questions? Uh, so we do. I'm going to uh, let's see the last. Oh, well, well, the last one was from John. Thanking everybody. So appreciate that. Um, Adam asked a question that I uh, we can have. So so Adam's asking. We mentioned we validated flow and flow rates, but have we validated power loss uh, parentheses torque predictions given by particle works? And and so Ragnar, I didn't know if you had done that yet. It's okay if you hadn't, but can you speak to that one? Yes, we have uh, validated uh, power loss. So, so for our system, uh, for our drive drive train system, we can measure torque on a shaft and the uh, uh, angular velocity of the shaft. So that's power, at, uh, say, going in, and on the output, we can also measure the same the same two variables. So, so we can we can measure power loss for, for the system. Great, thank you. Okay, with that, we are at the time that we said that we would end. Uh, you will all be receiving a follow-up email from us. You may also take a look at Particle Works via the website for EngineSoft. And by the way, it's the enginesoft.com is the European site, enginesoftusa.com for the USA site. Um, and we will be happy to, to set up for going into more customized demonstration of the software for your particular applications. If other questions come up during the process, please feel free to email us and we will be glad to answer them. And with that, I would like to take a minute to uh, thank the Meritor people for uh, taking time out of their day to show how they use the software. I think the particle method is an exciting change that is occurring in our industry, and certainly Particle Works is leading the charge in uh, the application of that. Uh, and so for Ragnar and Brian, thank you for taking the time to show and discuss your application. Sure. With that, we will end the call. Good evening to those of you in Europe. Good morning by now in Asia. And thank you for Meritor. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Thanks, everybody.